the word of this year that we're standing on is a word called breakthrough. Breakthrough. I'm going to say breakthrough. Just as a reminder, breakthrough is a blessing that happens suddenly in any area of your life after you've been waiting a long time. That's what breakthrough is. Breakthrough happens in an area where you have been praying and you have been believing and you have been, you know, trusting in God with. And it's taken long time. Some of it, some of us, it's taken years, you know, or, or, or months or, but, or weeks. But it's been, a, it's been a long time for you in your life. And suddenly at one moment, everything changes. That's breakthrough. Breakthrough is totally supernatural. It, has, it really has nothing to do with your effort. It has everything to do with the spirit of God. This is what it says uh, in Mark eleven twenty two. Can we go there? Mark eleven twenty two. It says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Look to the neighbor next to you and say, have faith in God. Have faith in God. For sure I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Mark eleven twenty four is the scripture that we're standing on this year. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you, say, that you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. And everyone help me out. And you will what? And you will what? But I want to go up here. I'm going to go up to the beginning of this. It says, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to this mountain, everyone say mountain. What do mountains represent? Problems. I'm, I'm gonna say problem. You are all right. I didn't know anybody was gonna. I didn't know anybody was gonna respond back. So you, you, you caught me off guard a little bit. I was like, uh, what do I say? <laughs> didn't didn't uh, go over this part. If this happened, um, but but mountains represent problems. Everyone say problems. Are there any problems that are standing in the way of certain breakthrough in your life today? Is there any problems that are? You can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. Are there any problems that that are that have arisen in your life that you can see with your own eyes that you are facing? You can raise. Come up. If you don't have problems, you are Jesus on earth, okay? Okay? <laughs> what do mountains represent? It represents problems, problems. But I want you to know today that, that I want to let you know that every problem with your finances, every problem with your family, every problem with your marriage, or every problem with your kids, or, you know, every problem of confusion that's keeping you not knowing which path to, go, to move in, every problem that rises in your life, Get this, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for God to get the glory. Every problem, you're gonna look at problems differently today. Every problem that you are facing in your life is an opportunity for God to get the glory. What does that mean? This is what this means. In John 9, 2, there is a man that is born blind. And the disciples, during this time when someone was born blind, people are are born with any type of problem, people would associate that problem with sin. So if you were born during this time, this is Bible times, you were born with something, people would associate that with sin. So the disciples come up to Jesus and they say, Jesus, this man over here that was born blind, is it because he sinned or his parents sinned? And Jesus looks at him and them and say, and says, neither. This man was actually born blind so that when he receives the power of God to receive his sight, everybody who knows him will give God the glory. Everyone say my problems are a platform for God to use through his breakthrough. Come on. (laughs) So in essence, this man was born blind. But when God heals him, all the people that knew this man with this problem, all the people that grew up with him, all the people that, that were his family members that did, that did not know God, all the people that are around him that lost their faith, when they saw this man get transformed, when they saw his problem be transformed with sight, people began to come and gave God glory for it. The problems that you are facing today is an opportunity for God to use as a platform for his breakthrough tomorrow. I'm going to say it again. The problems that you are facing today is an opportunity for God to use as a platform for his breakthrough tomorrow. 
And some of us believe, you know, that, that we're going through certain problems and we're asking the question, is, is it because of what I did? Did, did I sin? Did, did I mess up? Did I fall short? Some of us have gone through problems, right? And we're like, is it because God is mad at me? Is he disappointed in me? Has he forsaken me? But this is what I want you to know. It's because God wants to use every problem that has arisen in your life as a platform for others to see that God is faithful through you. God wants to demonstrate his powerful miracles, signs, and wonders through your problems to an unbelieving world. Who's experiencing some problems? You see, because you, here, here's the deal. I want to talk about the key to solving problems because many of us are experiencing problems and we don't know how to solve them. Some of us are living with confusion with the problem. Some of us have, have been experiencing certain things where we've gotten so used to the dysfunction of the problem. Some of us are discouraged about certain problems, anxious about certain problems, afraid about certain problems. And it's because we're not using this key that I want to talk about today called prayer. Everyone say prayer. prayer. How can you expect breakthrough this life? Oh, I'm sorry. How can you expect breakthrough this year if you don't have a prayer life? You see, it's easy to complain. It's easy to, to go to get counsel from someone else first. It's easy to get out in this life and try to solve all the issues and problems by yourself because the enemy makes you believe that, 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 that prayer is too hard to do. It's just, it's just too hard to wait on God. It's, too, it's just too hard to go to God. It's the easy way out to just go to something else before you go to prayer. But prayer is one of the most powerful weapons that God is giving you that we are not using. But I wanna talk about this today because I wanna talk about the key called prayer, but some of us are, have been praying. Raise your hand if you pray. Some of us are praying, right? We're, we're praying, but we're not, we don't know how to use the keys, the keys to prayer. The name of this message is called The Keys to prayer. I want to show you briefly real quick how to use the keys to prayer. This is what it says in Matthew 16, 19. It says, and I will give you the keys. Everyone say the keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The keys to prayer. I want to talk about the keys to prayer. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You see, when, when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, Jesus, stay with me, is, is speaking to his disciples, and he said, today, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. We, we see this, and we have no idea what this means. But people back in Jesus' day I ex knew exactly what it meant. So it hits them differently than the way it hits us. Because during those times, people knew the servant's role in a house. Did you know that during those times that, that the master of the house would give his keys to his most trusted servant? He would give the keys to his most trusted servant. And the keys basically symbolize the authority that the servant had that he was sharing with the master to, to be able to, to, this is to all the doors on, at the estate, to be able to open and close the doors, to be able to unlock and, and lock the doors to the entrance of his home. And so when Jesus is talking about the keys of the kingdom, Jesus is talking about the entrance to his home called heaven. And basically what you need to know is these keys are very, very important because the scriptures talk about in heaven that there are storehouses that are filled up with God's provision, that are filled up with God's healing for your life. There are storehouses in heaven that contain breakthrough, that contain everything that you need for this life. And Jesus is saying to you and I today, stop complaining over the problem. Stop being anxious over the problem. Stop being mad and angry at the problem, but use this key called prayer to bring down breakthrough that I've already provided. <laughs> Everyone say the keys. <clears throat> you know, some of us have been locked out of opportunities. This is what the Holy Spirit shared with me. He said, some of us have been locked out of opportunities. We've been locked out of resources, abundance, open doors, not because of sin. Or it's because God is ignoring us. It's because he's already given you the keys, but we don't know how to use it. You know, I remember one time I was, I was, I was locked out of somewhere. 
because there was a way, I, I had the key to get into this place, but there was a way that you needed to turn the key. Has anybody ever happened to you before? Somebody gave me the key to get inside this building, but there was a way you had like turn it up and open, you know, hold the door in, turn it up and then push it in. It was like all these instructions. And I just came to the door. I put the key in and I turned it and then it was still locked. You see, that's how some of our prayers lives are. We, we pray and, and nothing is happening. No, nothing is unfolding. It's because we have the key, but we put it in, but we don't know how to open the door. I want to give you four keys. I'm going to say four keys. Four keys. I need to get excited. Come on, get excited and hungry. <laughs> four keys to prayer. Four keys that I want you to take with you today and use. This is not a formula. This is just the principles of heaven. I'm going to go to the first key. Let's go back up to Matthew 11:22. 22. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. The first key that I want to teach you today, and I wish someone would have taught me when I was younger, I want, you to, I want to teach you a key called the decree. Everyone say decree. 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 Jesus says, Jesus says, he says, for surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, Jesus doesn't say, for sure I say to you, whoever asked the mountain, whoever asked the mountain to, 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 to go, then it's going to happen. Jesus is saying, I'm not calling you to ask the mountain. I'm calling you to tell the mountain. I'm not asking you, uh, Jesus is saying, I'm not asking you for you to ask Satan to get out of your house. Jesus is saying, I'm teaching you how to tell Satan to get out of your house. You're not asking the enemy to leave your finances away. You're telling the enemy to get away from your finances. God is saying, I'm not, I'm not training you to ask you for things that I've already provided. I've given you the keys. The storehouse is waiting for you just to pull it down. But the first key to learning how to use the keys is a key called decree. You see, when you come to the Lord and you're growing as a babe in God and you're, and you're getting stronger and you're learning more, a lot of times when it comes to prayer, we come to prayer like babies, right? We, we you know, when, when babies, when you have, uh, when you are a baby or if you, if you have children, you know, you know, they, they ask for water and, you know, they, they ask for juice and, and I'm hungry and, and, and this is what we sound like to God. But what happens is as you get older and it's your house, you don't have to ask mom for some water no more. You don't have to ask for some milk. Now you get to go to the refrigerator and you get to open up the refrigerator yourself. It's called maturity. And some of us are living in our lives and the refrigerator is, is full of God's promises. And we're still asking God and we're begging him, speaking like a baby. Ooh, God, 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 can you help me with this relationship? God, I don't know what to do here. And we're talking like that. And God is like, son, daughter, the refrigerator is open. Get up, use your key called prayer, decree and declare and open the refrigerator. The first key is we have to learn how to decree. Everyone say decree. decree. Listen, some of us are asking for things we should be telling. Some of us are asking God for things that he's already given us the authority to speak to. And some of us are locked out of breakthrough because we're using the wrong key. The key is not begging. The key is learning how to decree. We are going to grow this year. We're going to grow spiritually this year and everything that God has given us. The scripture says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Do you know that people have died on this earth? And it wasn't God's will for them to die when they died. But they died because they didn't, they, 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 they didn't have the knowledge. They didn't have the maturity and understanding that God had already provided what they needed. But they didn't have the maturity enough to know how to use the key. I want to do some decrees right now, but before I do, I want to ask you this question. Do you decree over your finances? Do you decree over your family? Do you decree over your career? I'm asking you this. Do you decree over your anxiety? This is how, this is how we decree. I just want to make it very, very practical, right? Because there's certain things that we're asking God for, and he's like, stop asking me and tell it. Tell the mountain to go. 
He says, I'm not calling you to ask the mountain to go into the sea. I said, I said say to the mountain, tell the mountain. We asking Satan politely, uh, uh, can you please leave my child alone, please? Tell him to leave. So this is a decree. Father, I decree in the name of Jesus, breakthrough is happening over my finances from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I no longer have to beg you, God, for money. God, when is the open door happening for my finances? No. You know what I do? I I go to the extreme. I pull up all my bank accounts. I do this all the time when I need to. I pull up all my bank accounts. I lay my hands on my bank account, on my phone. Online banking, anybody? Okay. Y'all looking at me like, you can do that? Um, oh my God, 2024. Um, I get my phone, I open up my app, okay, and I look at my bank accounts and I lay my hands on the bank accounts and I decree, I say in the name of Jesus, I command money to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, for your finances to find me. I thank you for people to just call me out of the blue for a job. I thank you that, that people that owe me money that I forgot about would just send money to me. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name for a breakthrough of my finances in Jesus' name. Lack, you, had, you gotta go. Lack, you have to go right now in Jesus' name. God has not called me to walk in lack. He's called me to live in abundance because this is a fruit of my relationship with him. In Jesus' name, there are things that we are settling in because we don't know our identity and the power that we have. Learn how to decree in your prayer life. You got to go from asking and begging God like a child to now standing there like a prince or princess of the Most High God and decreeing the thing that you want. He says, do not be anxious about anything. He says, but in everything, with prayer, he says, with request. He said, make your request known to God. You can go to the throne room of grace and make your request known as a child of God. I request in the name of Jesus that this situation changes. That's the first key. Everyone say decree. 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 Let me tell you this. Decree is not the same. I got to make this, uh, uh, you know, just people in, this, in our culture today. I get it. Decree is not speaking into the universe. Let me just say that right now, okay? It is not. Because when you read Mark 11, 22 to 24, the first thing Jesus says, he says, have faith in God. He says, have faith in God. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, because Jesus, who is the beginning and the end, already knew that one day we was going to have this conversation like, okay, so I could just have faith and just speak things into existence and and say things and and things just manifest. I, I, I can do that? No, but Jesus says, have faith in God, right? Um. Decreeing is standing in Jesus as his child, accessing something that he's already said you could have. Did you guys get that? Decreeing is standing in Jesus as his child, accessing something that he's already said you can have. This is what it says in Mark eleven twenty two. 22. I want to go back there. So the first key, what's the first key? The first key is decree, decree, decree. So this is what it says, Mark eleven twenty two, And it says, he says, let me go back. The next line, it says, uh, Jesus answers him, have faith in God. Keep going. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. But this is what it goes on. It says, and does not doubt in his heart. But here's, here we go. But believes, everyone say believes. My wife opened up with this. I said, she preaching my message today. I was like, she about to give away all my stuff. Uh, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. I'm going to say it again. This is, uh, I'm talking about the second key now. Therefore, I say to you, this is the scripture we're standing on. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. The second key is ask and receive. Ask and receive. Right. I've always used this example. When you ask someone to do something for you. Right. And they do it. The polite thing after they do it is to say. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you is is the the, the decree or, or it's 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 the it's the. The, the, it solidifies that, that you have received something, right? Saying thank you. And many of us are begging, for, begging things for, from God and, and we, we, cause, because we haven't received it yet. When you truly receive it, you'll pray, right? But the second thing you'll know how to do is after you decree and after you pray, you receive it before you see it and you begin to say thank you. Thank you. You know, some of us have been waiting for a year for stuff. 
Some of us have been waiting for, for you know, a, a season, six months or four months or five months for something. Do you know that Abraham had to wait 25 years? Abraham said thank you to God for 25 years before he saw the promise of his son. He began, as soon as the first day God told him that he was going to bring a, a child in his life, that was going to, that the, the promise of, of, of the nation that was going to be birthed through Abraham, immediately Abraham, be, Abraham begins to thank God on day one. He begins to thank God. and He doesn't see it the first year. He still says, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I receive it in Jesus' name. Well, I don't know if he said in Jesus' name, but I'm saying it. But, but he began to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Year two, year three, year 10, all the way up to, to the fulfillment of his promise. He had already received it. So he receives it before he sees it. That's the second step. That's called faith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's impo- the scripture says it's impossible to please God without it's impossible to please God without faith. You have to learn how to receive something before you see it. People thought I was crazy when I was reading these scriptures over, I don't even know how many years ago now, maybe 15 years ago. Time goes by so fast. And I broke my ankle. I'm not going to get into the whole story. But I broke my ankle playing basketball. Cross them up. No, not really. Um, I broke my ankle playing basketball, and immediately what came out of me, I was playing at a park, and people thought I was crazy. People heard, people heard the snap, and people were like, your ankle is broken. I said, no, my ankle is healed in Jesus' name. As soon as it happened, I was at the park, and people, I didn't even know everybody, and people were like, uh, okay. They helped me over to the sideline. I ran to my car, I want, you know. And, and, I, and I get home, and, and now I'm in this place of saying, you know what, God? I have been in your word. I've been seeing miracle signs and wonders you do, and I'm believing that what you did yesterday, you'll do today. And at the time, I didn't have insurance to go to, go to the hospital, so I said, you know what? I'm, a, I'm not telling anybody to do this. Please don't do this, okay? Only if Jesus says do it, um, like audibly with the voice, and he stands right in front of you with his robe on, okay? Um, don't do this. Um, but I did. Okay. So, so I was like, God, you know, I, I, I was, I was like, my ankle is healed. And, and people, some of my family members, um, who are not present today, or maybe, I don't know, um, was like, boy, you crazy. You need to go to the hospital right now. Your ankle is broken, which, which any good parent or a person that loves you would say. Right. But I was so convinced that God had already healed my ankle. You couldn't talk me out of it. This was a new faith that I had. And I believed that I believe that childlike faith and I believe that God could do it. Let me tell you this long story short. The, 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 the first day it, I received it. Right. I received it on the first day and it didn't happen. And the fourth day by that Thursday, my ankle was totally healed. The swelling had come all the way down, and I was able that weekend to do things with my, with my feet that, I, that was just an impossible thing to do. But here, here we go. The breakthrough was manifested on the fourth day, but I received it on the first day. And, and what God wants you to do is he wants you to stop receiving it when you see it. That's called baby faith. God is maturing you as, a, as his child in your identity to be able to receive things before you see it. That's why when Jesus speaks to the tree... As I talked about a couple weeks ago, he curses the tree and nothing that is seen happens. But Jesus curses this tree and he walks away. He comes back the next morning and the disciples are like, look at the tree. This is how we get into this whole thing. What you said, it's, it's dried up from the roots because the roots is underground, right? The breakthrough started in the unseen before he could see it, before anybody could see it. But Jesus had received it as soon as he said it. Amen. Amen. Are y'all getting this? Preaching and sweating and all that is it's going through live right now. But I'm going to get through this. Uh, Mark 11, 24. Can I, can I share the third key? So the first key is decreeing. The second key is ask and receive. Okay? Now, it's not on the screen, so you have to write it down. But the third key is this. The third key is this. I'm going to go, go back to Mark 11, 24, and then I'm going to go keep, keep reading down because this is so important for breakthrough this year. He says, Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I'm going to keep going. It says, and whenever you stand praying, this is very important because this is a reason why some of our prayers are not having breakthrough. Very, very important. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, 
If you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you in your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So that means that if you are harboring unforgiveness towards a relative or someone who did you wrong or someone who let you down, listen, you can, you can pout all day about it, hold on to the unforgiveness, but it's affecting your prayer life. Because truthfully, you can't even really pray in faith when you, when you are holding unforgiveness towards someone else. Because the whole thing about faith is first receiving forgiveness from Jesus. How, how are you truly going to receive forgiveness from Jesus if you're holding on forgiveness to, towards someone else? You're not. If you have a forgiveness issue with Jesus, I'm sorry, if you have a forgiveness issue with another, purpose, with, with another person, it's quite plausible that, that, that you have a forgiveness issue with God. What I mean by it, that is, it's hard to receive forgiveness from God and you're dealing with the condemnation. You can't get over the shame. You can't get over the stuff. It's because you're holding unforgiveness towards someone else. And it's messing, it's getting in the way of your prayer life. It's getting in the way of your faith life because I'm spitting all over the place. But it's getting in the way. <laughs> it's getting in the way of your prayer life. So the third key is forgiveness. You need to ask the Holy Spirit right now, who am I harboring unforgiveness towards? Do you know that there's people that will stand before Jesus? He'll say, I never knew you because you've been, you walked a life holding unforgiveness towards folks. Unforgiveness is, the, is major in the kingdom, major, because the whole thing with God is receiving his forgiveness. So the third key is unforgiveness. But I want to show you, I want to show you real quick as I close, um, how, to bring all this together. I want to show you all this as I close. This is Acts 12, verse 6. Acts 12, verse 6. Here we go. I want to talk about this because this is when the early church first started. And James, who is a disciple, he gets, he gets killed. They, they, this is after Jesus goes to heaven and he sends the Holy Spirit. And now the church is being birthed and they're moving in miracle signs and wonders. But, but, the, but they captured James and, and they executed him. And now they capture the next leader, who is Peter. They capture Peter and Peter's now in prison and he's going to be sentenced to die the next day. So this is what happens. It says, and when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping. Peter is about to be executed. Stay with me as I close this out. It says that night Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. So that means he has chains around him and there's guards keeping the prison. Now behold, everyone say behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and he raised him up saying, arise quickly and his chains fell off of his hands. His chains, just make a mental note of this, his chains fell off of his hands. There are chains in your life, right? That there are certain, there are chains that we think we gotta, we gotta struggle with to take it off. I gotta struggle with this issue that I've had this, for, for, since I was a child. I gotta struggle with this chain that is, that is now a part of my identity that even when I think about myself, I refer to the chain. I refer to this issue that I have. I refer to the anxiety like it's really a part of me. I, 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 I associate this fear like, like, like this fear like it's really, really a part of me. Like I, I associate the rejection and the fear of rejection like it's really a part of me. I've been holding on to this chain for so long. My trust issues with people because of what the others did to me. Uh, now, now, it's, now it's a part of who I am. And we, we've, we've formed this chain as a part of us. But it says instantly when the angel shows up that the chains fall off. And I'm going to tell you why. Keep, keep, keep watching. He says, arise quickly and his chains fall off his hands. Verse 8. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him. Look at this. And he did not know what was being done by the angel was real. He thinks he's in a vision. But through, through seeing a vision, verse 10, when they were past the first and second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city. So Peter, the chains fall off, everyone's sleeping. He walks out with the angel and there's one gate. It's a guard post. There's guards. The gate opens by itself, 
right? He goes to the next gate. The gate opens by itself. He gets to the third gate. The gate opens by itself. You see, some of us are trying to push open doors right now. We're struggling trying to push the door open, push the gate open. But there's something that is happening that I want to teach you. That he goes up to the door. The angel doesn't even touch it. They're walking again. The door opened by itself. The door's open by itself. And then it says when Peter gets out, it says when they came to the iron gates, which opened to them of its own accord, they went out and went down the street and immediately the angel departed from him. But this is what I want to show you because the angel leads Peter out. But I want to show you something that we don't see that is happening. I want to say the keys, the keys, because something was opening the gates. Something was unlocking the chains. The chain didn't just fall off. There was a key that unlocked that thing. The gate didn't just open. There was a key that unlocked that thing. And when they went up to the gate, the gate just opened by itself. And I want to show you why, because look at this. This is Acts 12, 5. It says, this is the beginning of this. I, I just took it back. It says, Peter was therefore kept in the prison. We're going back. But what constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. You see, it was the keys to prayer that was unlocking the chains, that had unlocked the gates that were standing in front of him. That when he goes up to the gate, the gate opens by itself because people were using the keys. Can you give praise to God for that? Yeah. Decree is the first key. Ask and receive is the second key. Forgiveness is the third key. And the fourth key, I said four keys. The fourth key is this, and I'll just sum it up. I won't even read it, but I want to tell you the fourth key because this is something very important of our, for our development, okay? The fourth key is this. Uh, uh, God tells the prophet Elijah to, to decree out loud that it's not going to rain. So for three years in, in the place that they were, the king of Israel... Uh, Ahab was tripping and they were dis, you know, rebelling against God. And God says, okay, prophet, I need you to go and say it's not going to rain for three years. So prophet Elijah goes up and he says, it's not going to rain for three years. And it doesn't rain for three years. So three years later, God tells Elijah to go and decree that it's going to rain again. So Elijah goes up and he says, it's going to rain again. So right after Elijah says it's going to rain again, which was God's promise, right? Anybody have a promise from God? Raise your hand. Anybody have a promise from God? So Elijah, after the promise is made, goes up and he says, it's going to rain again. But right after Elijah says it's going to rain again, Elijah sits down, puts his hand between his knees, and he begins to pray. He, he then sends his servant out, and he says, go see if you see a cloud. The servant runs out, and he says, I don't see anything. He, Elijah said, well, go again. So the servant went back out. He didn't see anything. The servant went back and forth seven times, inside to outside, just to, to, to let Elijah know if he could see the cloud, which means prayer has to be consistent, right? You don't pray one time and you give up. You thank God for, you, you keep decreeing and see you see a change. You keep thanking God and see you see breakthrough. And on the seventh time, the servant went out and says, I see a cloud in the distance the size of someone's hand. And then out of nowhere, it begins to rain. But, but here's the thing that I want to teach you for the fourth key. Let me ask you this. Why did Elijah need to pray if God already promised him that it would? The reason why this is so important is because there's promises that you have in your life. And many of us are just waiting for the promise to happen. God gave me a word. He says it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And we walk away, and that is it. But, but Elijah is a prophet. God said, it's going to rain. So Elijah could have just been like, it's going to rain. But Elijah still goes out, and he earnestly prays. Why? Because in order to see the fulfillment of the promise, Elijah needed to partner with God through prayer. The fourth key is partnering with God through prayer. It's partnering with God through prayer. The promise required partnership through prayer. You are going to graduate from, if it's God's will, it's going to happen. You know what? 
I feel like some of us are, are missing God's will because we're not praying. Let me tell you what God's will is for your life. It's to pray. It's to pray. You guys can stand to your feet. It's to pray. <laughs> it's to pray. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that Jesus... It's interesting that Jesus is the king of kings, 100% God, 100% man. And Jesus moves in miracle signs and wonders. But then you read the scriptures and Jesus wakes up early to pray. Jesus understood that although the promise was on his life to do all these great things, he still needed to partner with God to see the promise fulfilled. And there's promises that are on your life that God wants you to come in partnership with and pray it through and pray the promise through to pray the promise through so the first key decree right what's the second key ask and receive the third key is forgiveness and the fourth key is to partner with god and through prayer so let's just surrender that father we just thank you for the the word um just thank you father for the word in jesus mighty name um i thank you father that that it produces fruit in here in the name of jesus um i thank you that it births a harvest in jesus name i pray that this is not a message that we will ever forget but I thank you that right now we would adopt this word into, the, into our being, into our soul, into our heart, into our mind. That, Father, we would understand that, that Father, there, there is a desire that you have for us to come closer. There is a desire to, to know us intimately, for us to know you intimately. There is a desire to be so one with you through prayer that when we ask, we know that we've received it. That, that we begin to say thank you instead of complaining and arguing and being stressed, we begin to pray more. God's saying if you're, stre God's saying that if you're stressed out about a situation, it's because you need to pray more. He said, let your prayer life, he says the things that you are stressed about, write it down. Then, after you write it down, put prayer list on top. The things that you are stressed about, write them down. All the things that, are, that you're stressed about. Then on top of that, put prayer list. Let this, be, let this be a move of God that you see with your own eyes and experience with your own heart. So Lord, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for moving in this church radically through prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for moving in this church with miracles, signs, and wonders, with breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I thank you for breakthrough for our people here in Jesus' name to come alive in the spirit, to rise up and be an army for you, to be sold out for you, to, to be worshipers for you, to be leaders for you, to be unashamed for you, to be bold for you. Let this church not have an empty seat in this place because we're so moved by the spirit of God that when we go to the gym, people want to come near us. That when we walk to work inside the, the, into work where we are people want to come near us that our families will look at it and say what is happening in your life I want what you have that people will be drawn to us I thank you father that this place isn't packed just to have seats filled but this place is packed with your glory with your presence with your anointing let miracle signs and wonders that were promised in these times happen before our eyes let people get healed of a blindness in this church that people get up from wheelchairs in this church let people receive healing in their their hearts and their minds in this church in the mighty name of Jesus father we thank you for the families that are walking through these doors we thank you for the prodigal sons and daughters that are walking through these doors we thank you for the disenfranchised that are walking through these doors people that think you're mad at them because they're they're they're, they're they they associate with with the LGBTQ Lord I thank you in the name of Jesus that that is a community that is searching for you Come on, I'm gonna say it. That is a community that is searching for you. I pray that this would be a safe place for people to come in, transgender people, people that are dealing with, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that people would come in from the north, the south, east, and the west. That a move of your spirit would happen just like the Jesus movement in the 70s when the hippies were out of the churches and people didn't wanna let the hippies in because they, 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 were, they, they were doing drugs and all this stuff and they kept them outside of church. But Jesus, 
you came to them and you brought them inside the church and, and produced evangelists and pastors and leaders and a new level of revival that we've never seen in the earth. I pray for a revival in the LGBTQ community. I'm sorry, I messed it up. But I pray for a revival. It's a lot of letters. I'm messing it up. But I thank you for a revival in that community in the mighty name of Jesus. That people that are so afraid of God, angry at God, they're confused because they think God is, is an angry God or a judgmental God or a God that wants to send them to hell. I pray that they have an encounter with beloved Father in the mighty name of Jesus that would transform them in the mighty name of Jesus to find identity as a child of God. And I think that this church will be a part of the great move of these last days in the name of Jesus that people would come in here with all type of stuff going on but we're not going to judge them we're going to run to them we're going to love them we're going to adopt them they're going to become our family we're going to see them grow we're going to see them be delivered we're going to see people set free we're going to see people filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues we're going to see people learn to prophesy we're going to see people be sent out we're going to see people laying hands on the sick and seeing them recovered we're going to hear testimonies of breakthrough of reconciliation and families and homes and communities in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your spirit to take over this house. Come on, I need you to pray right now. I know we're a little over. I don't care. Come on, begin to pray out loud. If you pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. But Lord, I thank you for moving during this time like never before in this house. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. We're not doing church just to do church. But we want to see a move of God, Father. We want to see a move of God in this house. We want to see people hungry in Jesus' name. Fill this place, Holy Spirit. Fill this place, Father. Fill this place, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, fill this place, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, have your way. Have your way, Abba. Have your way, Abba. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.